Hi, I'm Elaine Whitefeather. I am the Executive Director for a Community for Peace. Welcome to our space. Today we want to talk a lot about our mission, which is to end violence to women and girls, men and boys, and to promote peace in our homes, our schools, and our communities. But I think the second part of our mission, which to me has my heart, and it is to reduce violence to, uh, the, and the impact of violence to children. So today I want to talk a lot about what our, kids, our For Kids Sake program is, introduce you to our Director of Children's Services, and talk a lot about why we think working with this next generation of children is the way in which we're really going to make an impact on preventing violence. As many of you know, domestic violence impacts children in their development, in their neurological development. And when we think about that and children exposed to violence this way, then we're starting to understand this really big myth, and that is this. When violence is happening between parents, kids are not asleep in the back room. No, we are not. We are listening to everything. And we are wondering and worrying about what's going to happen and what we might see when we come out that door. You see, when a child lives in violence, they do not, they learn how to not expect their lives to have peace and hope. Pretty soon, you start to believe that the world is against you and you start basing everything you want to do on that particular premise. We understand that children who are pre-verbal are impacted by domestic violence far more than children who can actually talk. And that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because when kids can talk, you can explain things to folks. If we were maybe not so impacted as adults, and not so much in our own coping strategies called denial and minimization, and thinking that children are not really smart, we would be able to tell them the truth. But we don't. Because we ourselves as victims and survivors have a difficult time telling ourselves the truth too. So what are our kids supposed to do? Every day, what is the thought and what is the feeling for a child to wake up wondering what's going to happen to mommy or what's going to happen to daddy and if he leaves, is he coming home? Or if the cops are called, are they going to take them away? Or are they worse still, are they going to take us away? Because you see, all of us kids, we, even though we may be isolated and feeling like maybe nobody really understands us, there's more of us than there are not. Children grow up to learn that violence is a way to solve problems. They grow up to not value people, places, and things around them because their whole world is filled with disrespect. Their whole world is filled with folks and a grown-ups who don't know how to honor mm, life and to treat it like it's sacred. So kids, well, at least this is what I think. I think kids don't want their parents to be wrong. I think all of us kids, even if we hate them sometimes for the violence and their behavior, we still love them. And because we love them and hate them sometimes, we don't want them to be wrong. So what do we do? We grew up to be just like them. That's how we can make them right. We can model them. We can emulate them. We can solve problems the same way they do. When they yell and scream and curse, we yell and scream and curse. When they are intolerant, we are intolerant. When they are judgmental, we are judgmental. When they are critical, children are critical. So when we see how children are every day when they come in our center, we can pretty much tell you what their environment is. The thing about For Kids Sake and why we created it was simply this. Well, I wish I would have had a place to go. I wish my mother would have had a place. I wish all my moms here would have a place for their children. So it's sort of what I tell the mothers here in our parenting programs, right? How are you supposed to know how to parent if you never saw it? How can anybody hold you accountable for not knowing how to be a nurturing parent when you don't even know what nurturing means? So we take all of that into account. Because we're a trauma-informed social justice center, we understand, number one, all the blocks and barriers of systems that would also impact your ability to be a good parent. We understand the historical trauma that might come from your population or your community that blocks you from getting help from systems. And we also understand because we are survivors who are also moms. And we know how much we love our children, even if sometimes our own fear and our own pain keep us from ever telling them that. I know the moms out there would do anything to keep their children. And I know the moms out there are suffering a lot with a lot of stress 
and worry about whether people will other understand them. So here in a community piece, I want to say to you, we got you, we understand you, we're a mom just like you, and we had to have help just like you too. So one of the be best helps we have here at a Community for Peace is found in who I call our Mary Poppins. If I could have just had her as my preschool teacher, if I could have just had her as my For Kids Sake advocate, then I probably would have spent far less time in my life feeling hopeless or feeling like there wasn't an answer to a prayer. Katie uh, Humer is our Director of Children's Services. She is effervescent. She is a ball of hope. She is a morning star that brings a sense of light into the darkness of children's lives. She has brought to us all the importance of kindness, of tolerance, and um, of understanding. And so it's really great for me to turn this over to her and have her talk about her program and what we do for kids here at ACFP. Hi, I'm Katie Humer and I'm the Director of Children's Services at A Community for Peace. Um, our children's program is called For Kids Sake. Um, we specialize in working with children who have been impacted by domestic violence, family violence, any sort of violence and trauma. Um, as Elaine said, the impact to our children is deep and it can essentially lead to a life of violence from what they've experienced as children they will turn into as adults if we don't intervene with love um, so here at our at our agency and with our children's program we want to create an environment that's very different than that of which the ones our children have experienced already it's one of peace it's one of hope it's one of love um, our, we have three main rules in preschool because uh, Children understand rules, and so whether you're two years old or you're um, 11 years old, the concept of rules and guidelines creates safety. And that is our number one rule, is safety, um, because domestic violence isn't safe. And so to understand what it means to feel safe physically in your environment around you, but also in your heart and your emotions, and being able to express how you feel in an environment where people want to know, where people care, where you're heard and you're understood. That's sort of the foundation of what we do with our children, is creating a safe space where they can be heard, where they can tell their stories, um, and they can feel safe doing so. The next thing that we really work with our kids on is this concept of kindness. Because again, domestic violence isn't kind, but the world that we're creating and the world that does exist, and we want our children to know exists, and that they can create for themselves and for others, is filled with kindness. Um, so the first part of living in a world of kindness is being kind to yourself. Um, so often the children blame themselves, um, and mentally, emotionally, physically beat themselves up for what is happening around them. And so we're consistently intervening on that and teaching them how to be kind to themselves, how to speak positively about themselves, how to encourage themselves and believe that anything is possible, because it truly is. We just need to show them that, that it's the opposite of what they've experienced. Domestic violence isn't kind to other people, it's about power and control. So to have someone else care about you, to be kind to you, and then you're able to do that to someone else and see the ripple effects of that. Um, you know, our children gain a real sense of confidence within themselves when they're able to be kind to another child and they can see the joy that it brings to that other person. Um, that builds their self-esteem and it builds the self-esteem and self-confidence of the other child. And that's the beauty of the interconnectedness of kindness. Um, and so once we're kind to ourselves and then we can be kind to the others, we can then be kind to the space around us, the world around us. Um, in domestic violence, there is no care for human life, so why would there be care and concern for inanimate objects, punching holes in the wall, throwing things across the room. Um, so our kids are very rough with the environment around them. And so we strive to help them to take care of things, to value what they have and, and what they're able to play with when they're here with us. And not only is it just the caring for the environment, but that helps to create ownership of a sense of community that our For Kids Sake program really belongs to the children. There wouldn't be a program if our kids weren't here. And so the more that they can contribute to the space, to caring for it and caring for each other, it's their own little safe space within this world. So no matter what the dynamics are in their family, 
it doesn't really matter because when they come here, they're able to experience the sense of safety and the sense of kindness. And the last part that we talk with our children in everything that we do, it all comes back to choice. You always get to choose how you wish to be. Um, so do you wish to be safe or not? Do you wish to be kind or not? And anytime a child makes a choice that isn't safe or that isn't kind, there's always an adult advocate there to help intervene on that. And by intervening, I mean we just ask them, was that kind? Was that safe? Because so often our children, it's still not ingrained in them to even think about safety and kindness. And when we ask them those questions, more than not, they're able to recognize, no, that was not. And so the follow-up question always is, well, how could, you, how could you do that differently? How could you make a choice that's kind? And how could you make a choice that's safe instead? And giving them that option of choice allows so much freedom in themselves and in understanding the complexities of their life. Um, because so often it's very painful in children to understand why two, one person they love can hurt another person that they love. It doesn't make sense. And that's what it really comes down to, and that's what we're able to tell them in these moments when they do share bits and pieces of their story and what they've experienced, is that sometimes people we love choose to hurt other people we love, and it's not safe, and it's not kind, and it's not okay. But there's no judgment for the love that they feel for the individuals in their life. It's just an understanding of what the impact is. And so the more that we can give them the opposite of what they've experienced, these positive impacts of safety, of kindness, of love, of community, the more they're gonna to move towards that than what it is that they've experienced. And that is essentially the bottom line of what we do. However much time they spend with us, whether it be 20 minutes or five years, that this environment is going to plant seeds in them that will grow, that will grow at some point in their life and will not only change the way that they live, but it will help to ripple out and change the world around them as well. So one child at a time, one act of kindness at a time, that is our intention in helping, um, helping to change our children, helping to change the impact of domestic violence and generationally, and helping to change our world.